Okay, here we are. So here's the simplified version of this. We've got one, where's my thingamajig? Can't believe it, misplaced that already. All right, so here's the, uh, here's the blinker here. This is, act, this is an LFO, it's blinking, that means it's an LFO, and it's, this is the rate if we want to slow this down. And you can hear it's a sample and hold, it's real random. So this is our, wow. So that's our, that's our clock out, which is really an LFO, but that's all it needs for this thing. And so that's going into the gate row, which is open in the gate. And the pink line, our Pepto-Bismol colored thing, is coming from the sample and hold here. That's the white noise. And so our uh, CV out, which is coming out of six, because these three are what's activated. And this is, I don't know if you can see that, but that's supposed to be yellow. The yellow means that we're in the sample and hold mode. These are in the, um, I forget. I'll come up with it in a minute. And this is in the LFO mode. So if we change this, I think we change the... And we're listening to this only here, which is on... That's the lowest octave. That's the second octave. And that's the third octave. And you can see that this is set quite low We've got to come down here to keep it in. Otherwise it gets so high it's kind of not musical anymore. And so my point here is that this output, the CV, is minus to plus 8 volts, which is quite a swing. That's 8 octaves. It's really not necessary or useful for a lot of things. So you're probably going to need an attenuator at some point in all this. And I've tried different things so far. Um, I've tried knocking it down 2 volts in this. Um, which was reasonably effective. Uh, this is something I made, just a divider circuit. Um, and I tried the uh, abacus here using channels or input two and three and just the tiniest little... Um, the, the t it was really twitchy, real touchy. This isn't very useful for this kind of thing. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but I'll probably get to that at some point. I tried this, and again, very kind of like overly sensitive. So uh, I'm not sure how to attenuate this in a, you know, a useful scale yet. We'll work on that. I'm just saying it's touchy, not that useful. As you can see here, as you can see here, I've received in the mail my verification of conformity. So I am now a conforming person, which I feel a lot better about because I was feeling something of an oddity the past few years. But now that I've, I've okay, I've passed, feeling much better. Uh, here's the little, the manual, the tiny little thing um, in 16 languages. Uh, and we'll get to the rest of what this does momentarily. All right, Jabertz, I was going to begin this by saying, my name is Ziza, welcome to Schwalkitz, but I I'm not going to say that. Um, I guess we can get that out of the way. This is about s steps. Um, it's just the blinky lights machine right here, and we're listening, we're going to listen to these two oscillators. And they're going in to this machine, this mixer, and kind of demonstrating these two blinkers on the left here. There's some hieroglyphs down here. These are elfin runes. I don't know what those mean. They're math symbols or perhaps it's Byzantine glyphic writing of some type. Uh, but anyway, when there's blinking, this is in a loop cycle. So this is now, these four blinkers, the greens, are now LFOs and they are, in this case, coming out of the, the square 
the unit down here at the bottom, those are all the outputs. And so this gate here is coming out down here, the orange lead, and it's coming into the gate input. It's coming out of the output of this CV, and it's coming into the gate right down here of this channel, which I guess is channel number six, the, and it's a yellow, that's yellow. It looks white on the screen because I don't know why, but it does. But that's a yellow light and it's steady state. And we can kind of change the sample and hold uh, how wide the range of notes is using that. And this is top row, this says time and level, that's a white lead, and it's coming from the noise generator up here. So anyway, and here's a box. We're in the shadow, of course, as ever. A musician inside every being. Our purpose is to empower those who have not and cannot. There you go, that describes me perfectly. You can see I'm modest with much to be modest about. And I've made this little thing here. Oh, you see, dark day, dark day in the neighborhood. We don't even need to look at that. Now that that's out of the way, a bit of nonsense. Uh, there is a difference here. I think this is called stairs in the mutable instruments. This is again, another pony thing, a copy of the mutable instruments. It's a digital kind of a little computer inside here which is keeping time and, and uh, generating pulses and gates and whatnot in various configurations and sending that info out to drive different things. Now here, as I said, is the output. We'll take this all apart in a minute. So if we look at this. So we've got two four LFOs, these two LFOs are actually functioning as the clock. So they're going into the gate to drive the clock. These two are coming from a noise generator that's over here. So this is white noise here and this is pink. We could use two white noises, but it doesn't matter. Either way is good. It's just a little different scale, I guess. And so the white noise is coming in here on channel five and channel six, or white noise on five, pink noise on six. And this determines the scale, uh, how wide the range of notes is. And it's worth noting that this is pretty wide. This puts out like eight volts for the gate. So you're gonna have to quite a few times kind of attenuate what goes on here. And we'll discuss that a little more coherently later on. And here's the outputs of the oscillator. And this going into my mixer here, and this mixer is a little interesting and strange. And from there it goes out to the computer. But this is a left channel and right channel. Left channel, right channel. And you can see that light is blinking occasionally. And this light also, wait for it, and that's going down. And now it's coming back up. And if we follow this blue lead, you'll see that these two channels here, there's the blues. So that's the left pan, that's the right pan. And they are blinking um, as an LFO, these two lanes here, that would be one, two, three, and four. They're down here and they're blinking very slowly and they're just kind of tickling the panning. That's why you can hear the sounds kind of walking back and forth. So I have no reverbs, no, no rubbish on the, uh, on the, um, you know, no effects on the output of any of this, just so we can sort of hear what it is type of thing. So if we wanted to, we could make this pan a little faster and zip back and forth. Now we can see that these lights are blinking more actively and you know, it's just kind of, too much of a good thing kind of thing. So I kind of want these to alternate. And this is one of the reasons I got this. I have not deciphered the, the hold function, which is a red light. These four are green. These two are yellow lights. They show up white, it looks like on the camera. Uh, so there's that to consider. 
The other thing is that this module is a simply a mod wiggler. It doesn't make any sound on its own, so you need obviously some uh, noisemakers. And in this case, we're using the Ona because they're simple, they sound good, and they are right next door. So that's that patch, and I just wanted to kind of get that documented. Okay, yeah, so this is, I think it's called Stairs, the Mutable Instruments version of this. And that version has different kind of software or firmware updates that you can make it, you know, gives it some different functionality that I don't know much about or anything about. Uh, so as far as I know, you can't use those algorithms in this setup. These things at the top, this is kind of, the whole idea here is that you've got three colors. You've got green, you've got orange, you've got red. And then when you push them down, they blink. And that gives you yet another tier of functionality. So it's kind of a, a forfer, if you like. You know, all these knobs and dials get repurposed for each different color and whether they're blinking or not. Like this, I can kind of, you should be able to hear that that's uh, kind of um, makes the sound glide between the different things, the different notes on on the uh, sample and hold. Now this does need a clock, but we're not using an external clock. We're using these two LFOs as the internal clock. So it'll clock itself is what I'm saying. So and you can use all six of these things kind of independently and together. And there's, you know, most of these videos I watch, they start out by pointing out that the gate is the delineator between grouping these six sets of uh, functions here. So that you could use these two for one thing, these two for another, and these two for something else, which is what I've done here. These are panning the, the, um, the mixer. Uh, and you need a special mixer to do that. Not all mixers will do it. And this are functioning as the clock for the sample and hold. And, and if I change this, that'll slow, that should slow the, I'm not listening to headphones, but that should slow it all down. And this should speed it up grossly. And the other thing is because this is such a wide range of voltage outputs, you will quite often need to go buy an attenuator if you don't have one and kind of amp this back down to make the thing that you're modulating behave normally. And this is some type of, uh, like, I think that's a square wave because we're in the green mode, so th that this is now a square wave. And this is some type of sine wave, and I think to the left is some kind of ramp wave. So that should sound a little different. Not sure if it does, not listening. Um, so this is... And I did try and clock it out to different things, and we'll look at that in another section here. Okay, so that's it for now, and we'll come back later to see if we can make sense out of this.